further ado then, let's start uh, by paying respect to the Buddha. Mm. Let's start our journey. Ready, everybody? Ready? Are you ready? Yes. yes. Very good. Kapei. Puhei. Kapei. Puhei. So let's start first, really, knowing why are we here, focusing ourselves. The reason for all of us to be doing our Dhamma service, for me to become a monk, actually, is because of a single person and uh, we, the inspiration we get from the wisdom that he left. So very, very, uh, with much appreciation and gratitude to the Buddha and to all our teachers. Let's remember now also it will be a celebration to our own teachers. Even if, even if they passed away, we will remember them and then we bow to the Buddha, all the teachers 2,500 years, all the way to our teachers, and hopefully we can honor all that duty. So, together we go. Mm. And we recite briefly. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa okay. okay, so let's start. Here we go. So first of all, I would like to take this opportunity, actually. I know many of you have been not one year or two years, some of them I heard have been more than 15 or 14 years sharing the Dhamma. So actually I want to start in the, with appreciation from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much for all the work that you have done in the past for the benefit of others, for your own children, and for humanity, because we are all connected. So, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much. I, I show thanks in two ways. As a monk, very happy, very happy, because you are also helping us to continue the Buddha's teaching forward, to inspire all the people. Thank you so much for all that you help us, and not just helping us in teaching, but also how much you support us, really, from the heart. We are alive because of your kindness. But you're doing still much more important work, which is keeping the teaching alive, inspiring minds, instructing minds to be good human beings. So thank you. That is the first appreciation I have. Welcome. And the second one is as a human brother. Really, thank you so much for being doing this work. You should feel satisfied. So let's pause for a little while. We recollect on all the years we have been doing service to others by teaching in any way, recognizing our good intention. We are doing it because of good. And from there, I tell you from the heart, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I know some of you have many years uh, teaching, and I know some of the, some of the things you might know, the, some of the things that we will mention today, that I will mention today. So, I will ask for a little bit of patience, if you know already, and I will invite you to do a question. Why now? Why did the monk decide to say that now? So, even if you heard something that you have heard before, don't go to the content and the mind, sometimes it goes like this to me, eh? and then, yes? Ah, no, it's okay, it's okay, thank you very much, thank you. So, let's not let the mind go, oh, I know that, and then goes into the... Or like this. So now you, you want this thing help me a lot with my own teachers. As you know, with our teachers, sometimes we hear the same story as we grow old with them and new students come in. We hear the same. How many times have you heard the same stories from our teachers? So I was at some time like this. Oh, again, this story, you see, sometimes the mind like that. Eh? But one day I got the idea. Why did Pante decide to say that now? And then you look at the person. <gasps> He's no boring anymore because I was looking behind line like an x-ray on the teaching. Very beneficial. And also since this is going to be recorded in video and the new teachers, most of you have experience already, isn't it? Teaching the Dhamma. But also new teachers, Dhamma teachers, maybe in the future will see this video. So I will go, try to go from the beginning and I won't go into content. I know you know the Dhamma. I know you know the content that we need to, to, to show. 
I will go better onto the thing that is behind, the attitude behind, and trying to provide tools as, as we go on how to make it easier for ourselves and more uh, inspiring for, for, for our children, uh, teenagers or adults. And for, with this, I go to show you a little bit so you know from where am I coming. As a monk, uh, I uh, have been teaching people for more than uh, six or seven years. And I, this is a group in Mexico that it has gone these uh, sessions for six years already. And actually, I didn't go to Mexico to teach. I wanted to go to Mexico and just practice. But my mother asked me, why did you become a monk? One time, she, and we are in the kitchen, and my mother comes in and she says, why? I say, why, mama? Why? Why did you left music? Why did you left concerts, traveling, your wife? Uh, the, the partnership and, and this sexuality. So I said, do you want to know why? And then she said, yes, I want to know why. And then I, I said, do you have time? Because <laughs> you're going to tell everybody. So then I started with four people and her, you can see her white hair is over here. She's my mama. <laughs> She's there. So she never failed. And now she knows the Dhamma and it has benefited, benefited much to her. And she's happy that, that I'm a monk now. So that's why I started teaching. It was originally not uh, my view. But as I said, in my late career, I was a musician, a composer, and I also was teaching a lot, all ages. And you will see some images. These children, this is as a monk. These children I was, I'm teaching now because, as you know, in Mexico, we have many problems with drug addiction. So we are trying to catch the kids before they get into drugs, trying to prevent them. So this is one of those groups. And I will be showing you. Uh, this is when I was a little person with, hair, with a little bit more hair. <laughs> the lady in yellow beside me, we, uh, we, are, we are making a puppet. You see there is a puppet over there. And we are playing the drums. And this group is too, sorry the photo is very bad quality, but it's the, the only one I could get here in the air. So we are teaching children two year, from two year to five year olds. And they are accompanied with one of the parents. So this was a workshop together. And we are playing with one puppet. We are playing the drums. And it was music. And uh, she is my ex-wife. She is from Macau. So that's why I lived in Asia for so many years. Almost, almost 20 years I lived here. So this was part of, uh, of my job. But a lot of groups like this. And I was also going to schools. This is another school of orphan children in Thailand. So we were a little bit more hair now you can see. Ah, yeah. So she's my ex-wife and we were working together. And as I was saying, we were going for, for just a service. Sometimes it was our job, we get paid. But anyway, we were going to many kinds of groups, also special education. We worked in Macau for years with people with Down syndrome, autism, and also we were visiting all people's homes. So we were, I was teaching the same, the same songs to babies. I was actually teaching children, only children, from two year old until 86 year olds, all, all, children of all ages. Uh, my eldest uh, student, our eldest student was a lady in the old ladies home and uh, she was 86 and she was playing the drums. So, that went on for maybe 10, 12 years, mostly teaching and also giving concerts and composing. So this is the background I have. With the drums, with the African drums, we used to go to primary school, secondary, junior high, uh, until uh, universities. And we were getting, let's say, a group of you, like 50 drums, and we would make a circle. And then we would go to the schools, level one, two, three, four, five, six, and blah, 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 all this. So literally, my dear family, thousands of kids I've been sharing something, trying to understand and trying to help them to, to learn. Can you find the monk there? <laughs> one, one cousin saw this photo and said, wow, this photo is like finding, finding Wally or something like this. And you know that. <laughs> so this is in Myanmar also, sharing with some kids. So literally thousand kids and then later on their parents. So it's not that I'm a kid's monk. Actually, I like to be human monk. And I don't want to specialize only in kids, although I know the needs, but I know and I like to teach babies, children, teenagers, and adults, which is the one that I do the most. Now, in the first session that do, you saw at the beginning, actually, it is very common to have three generations in the same place, learning the same thing now. This is what is happening in Mexico. First, we start with the parents, and then the parents, can I bring my mother? Yes. 
And then after, you think it's pop is, it is proper to, to bring my son? I say, do you think it's proper? Yes, and then they come, so not just one family, but a few of them. We have had the three generations learning, even Abhidhamma. Eh? So what has, how has this come to be? Generally people think, oh, Abhidhamma, oh, no, very difficult. Oh, I am like this, no? Or oh, study like this. How come we have children there? This is the question, isn't it? Well, this is what I want to share to you, how we have managed to have children, parents and grandparents, enjoying the session and getting engaged in it. So I tried to think, before this workshop, I tried to think, what are the elements? I knew some, but now this week, I really started thinking and trying to refine. And uh, I will show that thing. This group is a parent of drug addicts. There are 2,000 parents. At the beginning, I started going to the groups of uh, addiction people, addict, addicts, but then we saw that the problem actually was not only the addicts, it was also the family. You can see the problem we have in Mexico. Of, these are the parents, 2,000 there, so you can imagine. When people tell me, oh, here in Malaysia we have a lot of problems, I say, yeah, right, yes, <laughs> yes, you have so many problems. There are children now being reported that they are already addicted at the age of six. Six-year-old, and I have been on the centers with children 10-year-old already in the centers. So that meant they were already two years on the streets or something like this. So anyway, this is the background. So you will see how it is coming. So the main question that I get from Dhamma teachers or teachers around, they come hmm, and ask, Bante, how to make the classes more engaging, more interesting so that the kids want to come or sometimes if they get bored, how to overcome that? So by thinking to that question, I came to three to four, sorry, four words. And the first one, if you have notebooks, you will need it. Uh, warning, a little bit warning. There is a lot of information on today's workshop. But I, I'm living on Monday, so I didn't want it. I know this, the information for today could have been for a few sessions. But yes, it's going to be packed. Don't worry. Anyway, video is getting recorded. And later on, you can, you can look at it. Take notes as you wish, as you like, sorry. And then I will be passing, yes, many, many tools as I can. Okay, so the first thing that, uh, that, that I found very important is the word relevant. That what the children, teenagers, or I will say students, okay? You, you, you put children, teenagers, or, or whatever, or adults. The students need to see themselves in the content to be relevant. Because if this one is not there, have you seen kids like this in the room? And then you ask them, what, why, why are you here? Oh, my mama brought me. Uh, isn't it? So why are you here? I mean, of course, force. So if we don't manage as teachers to make what they're looking relevant to me, that has something to do with me, forget it. None, no children, no teenager, no adult, no one will be with you. No one will be engaged and you will just waste time. The next one is, which I find very important and very important here in uh, Asian style of teaching is reason. It's something that to my taste is not enforced enough. And also if the children don't understand why they're doing the thing, well, they also go, is it like, why am I here? Why did you brought me to this boring place with, with a, yeah, you, you know, no? So <laughs> anyway, reason. So we say relevant, reason. The next one is, if this one is in the mix, you can trust that even without your push, the learning will be happening. This is gold, curiosity. So we have curiosity here. When the kids want to know, they are already in your pocket. You will just help them to continue growing. Makes sense. Eh? And the last one, which I also think is missing a lot, not just in Asia, but everywhere, is fun. If we are not having fun as we are learning, eh, it, is, it is a bit dry, isn't it? Fun is like the honey. Sometimes we need to study difficult things, even us. So my question to you is, do you have fun when you learn? Do you? Do you offer that to others? Anyway, this is, we could finish. Okay, thank you very much. See you next one. <laughs> we could finish here, but no, no, no. We won't finish here. We will go to each of, each of, uh, of them, trying to explore. And I, will, I pick 
one example uh, of how am I trying to bring this into the classroom and I only brought examples that already worked. I'm not bringing you experiments. I'm bringing you things that are already work. So would you be willing to continue? Yes. Wow, that sounds very weak. Would you be willing to continue? Yes. That sounds better, but not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's start. The first one is relevance. To make something relevant. And the same thing is happening now. Né? So the first word we go and explore it. Yes. So once we have this, let me see what, what comes here. When you have a person a student of any age who said, all this has nothing to do with me, this is the worst position a teacher could have with a student, isn't it? Yeah. Because whatever you said, whatever, <laughs> whatever you wish, if that person is already like this, it's you, you are out, you are just wasting your energy. The, the, the more you say, sorry, sorry for that. I will be doing some uh, physical positions. It's not a, a monastic very etiquette, but anyway, it's learning time. Ne? <laughs> so if you have a chill child or a person that is out, this is the thought. If this thought, this is the most dangerous thing that we teachers should fear. When the person think all this has nothing to do with me. My mother sent me, my father pushed me, and I'm here waiting for the time that they return me my mobile phone, and then we can go to uh, ice cream or ice skating. So this is the most dangerous thing. How can we manage? This is why relevance is totally the opposite. When you are there and you see, wow, that is mean. Eh? The student needs to see him or herself in whatever we are showing them. If we are not managing them, bye-bye. No need to waste our energy, all of us. We better don't waste our energy, don't make them waste their time. So in what, in what way do I do? I will show you one example of what I do with children. These children are from 6 to 12. 6 to 12 is a group that is, you know, it's like a good group you can still handle. Already the 12 ones are a little bit big, so you need to give them different responsibilities so they feel useful in the group, otherwise they get bored with the sick year olds like, oh, this one. So you need to, anyway, it's possible. So what I go and then I, I start talking, you will see some examples, many of these here in Malaysia, in Taiping, you know, we have the Teams Association, and I was going to there every Sunday to, to, not every Sunday, every other Sunday, to, to play with the kids and learn. And, and I was, it, it, it went very well, actually. So anyway, in one of the sessions I said, don't you think that this, would you like to be like this? I ask you, would you like to be like some, any of them? Yes, of course. No, isn't it? We all would like to be happy. It doesn't matter our gender, our age, or our culture, whatever. So once I arrive to this point to the kids, would you like to be? Yes, of course I want to be happy. Okay, so also, not just humans, also animals, of course. Can you see this one? Wow, he's really having a good time, isn't it? Look at this one, such a enjoyment and bliss. He's this duck is turning in bliss, and this one is just pure joy, isn't it? So of course, with children, to make it relevant, it's obvious, and this is what I'm telling you, I know you know this, but we need to go to their interest. So if it is small children, of course animals are that. So but through animals you start getting the contact, something that is relevant to them, and of course happiness is also relevant to them, so we start linking them in, reeling them in. At the beginning, the first moment, we start reeling in, reeling in, reeling in, like you are fishing, especially on the first session, we are fishing the minds of the kids. And the first session, my dear family, maybe that session is the most important of all. Because on the first session, the whole dynamic of the full course is going to be established. The kids are very intelligent. And knowingly or unknowingly, they are observing every of our moves, every of our gestures, every of our words, and they are measuring who is this guy. What does this guy has to do in my life? Because that's what we all do, isn't it, in life? That's what, as normal, they're already doing it. So it is very important on the first day to establish a healthy, respectful, and joyful relation. Healthy, respectful, and joyful relation. If we manage these ones, and the words we are exploring now, oh, my dear family, next day they come, they already know where they came from. What are they coming? And from then on, it's just build up, build up, build up, 
and build up. So be very careful, don't get stressed, but plan well for the first session. Everything counts because we do the same when we meet a person for the same, for, for the first time, sorry. When we, as soon as you meet something, the brain is making calculations of every single detail. Hmm. So I was talking about relevance, I said, and then I tell the kids, do you, have you seen some animals like that? And I say, yeah, sometimes. And then I start asking them, how? Oh, one time my doggy hurt the leg or something like this. And then I start going, yes, this happens. And then, yeah, already the Buddha's teaching starts smelling. <laughs> smells like Buddhism here. <laughs> Happiness, suffering, Buddhist, Buddhist, Buddhist. <laughs> so here you see where it is coming. We say suffering, yes. And then I say, also nature, you see, sometimes nature also gets very sad. But you know, sometimes with nature, when the plants are very sad, what do you need to do? And of course, they scream, watering, of course, watering them. And then we need to bring some water. And as the water is there, we just put the water and And then, wow, do you see things can change from low to high? And then I always ask you, they of course love the sound effect, isn't it? <laughs> and then I tell them, would you like to do? Yeah, yes, okay, so here we go. Yes, yes, I'm, go. Choo. Yeah, and then I tell them, do you like to do it again? Yes, one more time, louder. By in this moment, they already release the body. They already know they are home. By this, as soon as the first mile comes, congratulations, teachers. Already you make the first milestone. That boy or girl is having fun with you. Now you are your friend. He or she is your, you are their friend. Oh, beautiful magic starts to happen here. Yee. Then we do the and come and then what I say what is the water then and then I start directing the mind the water is love if an animal is sad isn't it to your own doggy if your animal is sad what do you bring what kind of water do you put on that animal love you like I'm doing here to this horse in Mexico these are my neighbors in the monastery <laughs> So you just go, 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 go. Of course, the animals loved it. And from this, suddenly you have this, and boing, you get this one. Yeah. Very nice. So here we just made a big statement, isn't it? Just a few images, just a few images, and we make a big statement. And look how deep it is. Yes, from this to this, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, look at that. And of course, we have, you know, the mirror neurons. We do have mirror neurons, and there are some neurons in our brain who emulate whatever expression we see in somebody else, we don't just recognize it, we experience it. Why did you laugh right now when you saw the doggy? He's not even a human. <laughs> you saw? So we start using technically, or we as teachers, of course the children don't need to know nothing about it, but we know. So we start using all these tools and all the science that is behind in order to lead them for learning. Okay, so if it was a little bit, now talking as monks, Ah, no, sorry, sorry, I was, sorry. Only me monk, but let's, talking as Dhamma teachers. Yes, monks, okay, you are monk, a nun today, today, okay. Talking as monks, what we did right now, did you saw what we did? Actually, technically, in this game that we just did in a few seconds, we already explore and open the first noble truth, the truth that suffering exists, and the third noble truth, that suffering can be relieved. Of course, we know it's much deeper than that, but worldly, we know that we suffer and then we stop suffering. There are possibilities. We give the children the possibility already. From here, the door is open. You can go as deep as you wish. And you may mention Four Noble Truths or not, but the children already understood. So this is when I say relevant. Something that the children, even children or babies can see, and then you will have them with you. Of course, will be different for, for, for teenagers or, or adults. You will just change the language, but the essence is the same. Then I go further. I started with animals. Here comes, and put safety belts. I say, does that only happen to be like this, only happens to animals? Of course not, also to humans. And what is the water? They already know it's love and kindness. Of course, when we give love to the same person, it can go from sadness until this. 
we humans have the same potential as beautiful as this one. I so it. <laughs> I found that I couldn't I couldn't hold to put it there. <laughs> when I put on Google, happy face, wow, this one I really love. Anyway, these are potential and this is what I would say is relevant. So one thing we need to remember, don't give the children content. I will repeat that one. Don't offer content. Don't tell them better, much better and much deeper, offer them experiences. This is the first tip that I will pass. Don't give them what to think. Make them feel first and then reflect about it. Now you learning has really happened. And if I may, can, can I speak bluntly and honestly? Yes? I think this, in Asian style of teaching, is very, very low. We are only giving content, content like if, if we were FedEx just delivering information to the people. <laughs> information, 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 and you see people that don't even know how to behave in their bodies. You see teenagers and their bodies and you say, what happened to you? You are not even connected to your body yet, but have a lot of information. A lot of information, but the body is very clumsy. The emotional life very clumsy, and now I'm speaking not just Asian, it's not a criticism, all over the world, also in Mexico, and especially now with mobile phones and less socialization, much more clumsy, and we're still just feeding them endless information, which many of them, I don't know about you, but many of the information they give me at school, I never needed it, didn't you? So what are we teaching to our kids? the Sunday Dhamma School, we have a big problem. And here in Asia, you have it very sharp. Suicide rates are increasing and getting lower and lower and lower in age because of many pressures, also social media and all this. But one of the reasons is overstressing the kids. And we will get to that point. Anyway, I will be putting some things. So if we want to start moving from that to somewhere more healthy, don't let's yeah we need to give them content but first let's give them an experience they already tried it it's like if i tell you oh this cake is very tasty mm, oh, so tasty it is very nice look it's made out it is blue and it has made out of this and this and that but it, it, it will never be like go try it that would be the best so let's do that deal should we start doing this in our dhamma classes and if you are teaching in other in other environments would 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 you deal yes deal yes Yes. Okay, you did it with a monk, ne? In front of the Buddha, so... Ah, watch out, watch out. I like this one very much. Deal, please, let's make ourselves and our children a favor. Offer them experiences. Okay, let's go to the next one. Reason. This one, I think, is lacking everywhere. And if we are in this context, yes, I think especially in Asia, it is not a way, well now in, in, in Western style schools it's getting a little more, but still because of the heaviness of the culture, it's not a criticism. I had a, fa a Chinese family for 20 years. I was married 20 years with a Chinese family in Macau. So I know how it goes. So reason is not very, very encouraged. Hierarchy is. So for example, whatever the talk, whatever Ye Ye says, Ye Ye words. But then after ye comes taka, no? Taiko. And then kuma. And then jikuma. And then seikuche. All of them. Yeah, isn't it? So it depends where it is. There is no reason there. Is it? Is there reason? If taka says something that you don't like, he's the male of the family, the first one. And so everybody, there is, I'm sorry, it's not criticism, but I have a family and I love them. We need to start talking. So I'm just saying. Is it understood? It's not a criticism. My family is like that. I know. And in Mexico, also we have uh, different different style hierarchies. <laughs> okay, let's go to reason. How can we reason about it and, and talk about things? So one of the things. This is the, these are the kids in typing. So the main thing to do with them is asking them. Don't give again content. Don't tell them what to reason. Ask them to reason and then give the answer. So, for example, very often I say, who can tell me what is this? 
why you start making for following up questions. And this is something that we must encourage a lot. Otherwise, the kids will be just staying and listening, and either they get sleepy or bored or angry. That's it. And they are there. So this is also a very useful tool to keep them engaged. You know, this is for us. I am doing this, but this is for you. And you are also sharing to me. Tell me, what do you think? What do you think about this? And then make the reason. And you can see, if we are able to foster an environment of confidence, also an environment we have a big problem. Whenever people say something that is not uh, totally uh, true or right, we tend to mock. This is something, as you know, we need to put down as soon as possible. And in a Buddhist environment, it's very easy to do because we can speak about noble speech, etc. So it's easier than in a school outside eh? because there, who knows who you are dealing with. Eh? So actually, it's easier. So we can go foster making them reason. Why this? Why that? What do you think about that? Okay, so one of the things, we have a small example that I will share how I do that with them. When we're talking about the five uh, uh, precepts, of course, non-killing, stealing, uh, overindulgence of the senses, lying, and intoxicating, no? So when I say this, I go again to the, we go again to the experience and start to ask them, what do they think? What do you think? So, hey, what happened? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, this, this uh, got uh, disconnected, I think. Is it on? Let me see. Start again. I mean, it's on, but... Anyway, Kaphei, Fuhei, ah, very good. Okay, here we have it. I got back again, we are back online. So I, I am telling them, and then I ask them, do you think, how would you feel? How would you feel if you, for example, lied to your mom? And then they start saying all oh, this, this, and that, experiencing feelings. How would you feel if you still, etc.? Eventually, you start leading them, leading them, leading them, that one of the features, one of the features of breaking any of the precepts, precepts will be a sense of remorse and guilt that arises, isn't it? It's normal. If I lie, if I kill something, <laughs> You feel a little bit like this. So once you lead them like that through questioning, how it happens to you, why does it happen? And then you come here and then you show the, the, uh, that not only humans, again, you go and touch base with them. Also animals, can you see the guilt in, oh, poor guy. <laughs> can you see the guilt on this one? Of course, even animals. So this also, again, brings the Dhamma to the ground. It is not just me, but everyone, and it is normal. So we shouldn't be ashamed of it. Yes. And not a shame of guilt. We should stop the things that bring the guilt, isn't it? Yes, the kids start saying, so we come reasoning, reasoning, reasoning. Then we put the two contrasts. On one hand, the suffering the, and the guilt that, that the misbehaving can, can bring. And again, and, and then we see the opposite. So if we don't kill, if opposite than killing, we protect life, how would we feel? And then you know the, you know the drill. Uh, robbing for generosity, indulgement for satisfaction, uh, lies for truthfulness and helpfulness, and instead of blurring our minds, making it more clear. Then you can go as far as you want, reasoning with them with this. Then after that, then you give the content. This is called sila in the Buddha's teaching. How do we normally start? How did I normally stroke? Oh, there is something that is called sila, and then you go to uh, my thinking. I think we're going backwards. Instead of knowing first what it is in my life, making it relevant, we go first to the words, and then the words, we can lose them there. So can you see? Just another example. This is something that has worked. Hopefully, uh, it, it continue with all our groups. We can find, I'm sure we can find. So then after I go, of course, cause and effect. If you didn't kill and you help others, what do you experience? Ah, can you feel this image? Can we cap hay? Ah. Now, breathe like these children. Eh? You, will breathe out, you will breathe out like them. Cap hay? Ah. Can you feel the satisfaction? And now you reinforce it. We are, when we don't do wrong, we are decent. When we are decent, we are upright. When we are upright, the mind is open. When the mind is open, the mind is happy. Freedom from remorse. Kaphei, Puhei, ah, yes. <laughs>
and then we recollect. And from here, if you wish, you go to see Lanusati. Oh, yeah, the path is open. Yeah. Good? Going good? Yeah. Okay, shall we continue? Yeah. Okay, here we have, and then what we want to arrive is, I hope you see this little girl, Pais. What we want to arrive is, I go back to the main image. This was in Katina Day, and the Papa was coming. What we want to arrive is to become Kalyanamitas. I am not your teacher anymore. I am your spiritual brother. <laughs> Much elegant, isn't it? Sounds better, isn't it? So I am not your teacher, so let's start taking the teacher word out of our own heads. And when we go specially to Dhamma school, we are, they are my small Kalyanamitas because they are. I am your elder brother. I am your elder Kalyanamita. There is respect between us and we are supporting each other to cultivate and to go beyond the world. Imagine, to move away from suffering. Existential friendship, we can say. Can we see the importance of the work you are doing? Existential friendship. My Dhamma teachers gave me tools. Even after we pass away, you are giving tools to children. After they pass away, they will continue using them until they liberate themselves. Do you see the importance of the work we are doing? This is different then. And it is very beautiful. So, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. This is where we want to go. No teacher, I'm not your teacher. I'm your Kalyanamita, your spiritual friend, and so do you. What can I learn? What can we learn? Ah, very nice, very nice. Okay, continuing then. Next one, which is wonderful, curiosity. Once, as I, as I, once the child is curious, you can take a break because now you will be just answering questions. Much easier than preparing and giving material. Even if you don't want, they will continue. Avante, <laughs> why this, why that? Because curiosity already kicked in. This is the treasure, my dear family. Here we go, and very easy to foster in them. Just ask them why everything. You remember when we were a child, Mama, why this, why that, why this? Oh, even we were, we were like this, no, as parents. Well, keep that on, foster it. Why, why do you think this is so? Whatever you're talking about, simple, this is the key for curiosity. Why do you think about that? Because of that, and why that? Because of that, and why that? And why, and why? You can go as far as you wish. Hmm. Make sense? Yeah, so this is one of the things that you can pretend a little bit, and no, actually you learn a lot. So for example, you can see the enthusiasm of the kid. You see this one is jumping me. <laughs> because you start fostering this thing, and they also celebrate when they say, give an answer, even if they just participated and was wrong, celebrate it. You, are, you will not lie that it was right. You will say, actually, this needs a little bit fixing, but thank you so much for your, for your courage to come back forth. So start celebrating, and especially if they are right, you can also say, sadu, 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 what do you think? And why do you think that is so? And then you start having this friendship, this communication, and then as you can see there, I kind of, oh, who, who could be able to tell me what does this means? You see, I'm doing that one at that moment. <laughs> and the kids are, me because they already found a way that is a reward. It's something nice to be contributing. So my dear family, I think our classrooms needs a lot of this, do you? Oh, at least if we can improve it and make it more conscious, very good, very good for yourself. This will actually ease your work a lot. Way easier to work with children. You tell me, working with a group of children interested and non-interested children, have you won? Ah, the other one is like, <laughs> pushing, and they don't want to move, and the other ones, whoo, they're going along. Very good. Okay, so curiosity, don't give them the reason why, ask them why. So just a very simple question, and look, for it was, uh, I saw this quote as I was preparing, look who said it, and what he said, I have no special talents, I am only passionately curious. 
Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said so, imagine. <laughs> so we can imagine how far that can go. Also for the Dhamma, may we all find the spaces to balance ourselves, be conscious, and lead our family and children to keep this thirst, thirst of knowledge, thirst of wisdom, especially, isn't it? Ah, very good. Chum, 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 chum. Very good. Good. Curiosity, good. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have fun. This one I really like. This one may be my favorite. <laughs> okay, fun. How to foster fun? There, I hear we will start needing to shake ourselves, shake ourselves and start moving beyond. Because if you look in the world, outside when you go to the street, it's not very funny, isn't it? Is it funny? Everybody sees so, uh, so on the metro, it's not very funny, isn't it? It's not, it's the people is not unfortunately having much joy. And I understand there is a lot of stresses or something. Anyway, what we can do. So for example, you know, there is this that we need to do, not mean to do. It is very beautiful to inspire and to kids, to understand the meaning. So for example, for something as common as taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, what we will go and, of course, tell them what it means, the words or the Pali words, and then, okay, repeat after me. Udang Sarananga Chami, Dhamman Sarananga Chami, Sangang Sarananga Chami, Duti Ampi, Budang. Yeah, right? How can we make this fun? Okay, I'll give you a few moments, and I will give you one the idea that I got before. Maybe you can use them, but how can you make it fun? Not funny. Not funny. Fun. Make it fun. Not funny. It's not this way. You see, very, very, just one why changes a lot the meaning. <laughs> it's not funny. It's very respectful and very important. How can we make it fun? Well, one of the ways that I found was using the body. And as you know, there is not just one way of learning. There are children who, who learn by seeing. There are other people, Eva Mesutang, I heard it. And there are some, some children who learn by doing. There are some children who learn by kinesthetic notes. There are all the kinds. We have not just one intelligence. We have, as the Buddha says, six kinds of intelligence. Six consciousnesses. Says, 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 says. So, yeah, so, right, so we have visual, or auditory, smell, taste, bodily, and mind in itself. So actually, this is you with, by doing this kind of things, you are already fostering the different, not just for the ones who have special body intelligence, but for everybody, because we all have all of them, actually. So how I do, and please follow me, I say, Buddha, Saranang, which this is a house, no? That's the Saranang means refuge. Where do we take refuge? In my house. Gachami, I go. So to the Buddha, Buddha, refuge, I go, which is actually the Pali word. Okay, so we have the Pali words. Buddha, Buddha. Let's go together. Buddha, Saranang, Gachami. I go for refuge into the Buddha. Then what I found to say, Dhamman, like everything, no, the, the whole nature, Dhamman, the universe. Dhamman, Saranang, Gachami. Then Sangang, I was, oh, what to do with Sangha? What to do with Sangha? <laughs> anyway, I'm a monk. I don't know what you're going to do, but this is what I do. Now. I say, Sangang, Saranang, Gachami. Maybe you have to become a nun or a monk actually okay so i have a lot of shavers down there don't worry don't worry don't worry okay but next next week mass ordination in bgf <laughs> so said, okay i know you will need to find one but this is what i found sangang the, the robe isn't it the monk so let's go together buddha saranang gachami daman saranang gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami. You already made a deal with a manga <laughs> in front of the Buddha. Nah. <laughs> Watch out what you do, man. I will go teach it. Yes. I recruited, recruited 65 new monks and nuns. <laughs> already. Oh, no, 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 no. Just joking. Eh? Okay, so this is a way to do many things at once. And believe me, even teenage, young teenagers can handle it. You measure, you measure how much, and if they don't feel that, okay, I say, think about the movement, because that is next level, you see? <laughs> so you start dealing with everybody. Kids love it, and they follow it. 
Many. One way to do this, fun. Not funny, but fun. Okay, another way that I went to, to go funnier with the Buddha, Saranga Chami, what does it mean? Do you know what it means to take refuge in the Buddha? I mean, you are Dharma teachers, of course, you, you, you should know, isn't it? But uh, what is to be taking refuge in the Buddha? What is to take refuge in the Dharma? What is to take refuge in the Sangha? I thought, how can we do this an experience and even f more fun? So, you remember, we already spoke about suffering and, and happiness, that we have possibility for both. And we already said that if we don't pay attention, anger or dosa, being sad, it can turn into, into anger. The same dosa, just sad is cold and anger is hot. And then it feels, how does it feel? I ask the children, oh, it feels burning, like lava. Yes, like lava. And then say, by the way, do you know the lava game? You know the lava game? Where everything in the floor becomes lava and you can attach, ah, and you jump like this. So then I thought, okay, anyway, we are talking about hot things. Let's do the lava game. So here we go. Let me explain you how uh, Bobby, can you start moving a little bit? So maybe the camera will be. So what I did was the following. Game time, I told them, Yes, so everything is going good. So I have a few refuges here. I have the refuge, the Buddha, I have the Dhamma, the Sangha, Sila, Samadhi, Ipanya. So what I did, can you pass me these two to show me? What I did was pushing the, 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 the refuges here. Can you put one cushion on each of them? So then uh, I explained them that I am free from physical suffering. Thank you. So you put one cushion, let's say, okay, that's it. You put one cushion in here. And as we are walking around, everybody walk on the space, moving around. Be free from physical Everybody very nice. And suddenly, life starts to change. Something happens in our life. And what happened? Then you get the fire. And then I tell them, Saranamba Chami, Saranamba Chami. I even give instructions in Pali. Saranamba Chami, you come. And then they come. The whole floor became a lava, isn't it? So then the kids are like this. So then I tell them I have special shoes. Because otherwise, the first time, they are very intelligent. The first time when I come to look at them and ask them, who did you took refuge? And they tell me, why are you burning? <laughs> So I told them, I have special monk shoes, ne? so I have special monk shoes, so I can walk in the lava, no problem. So then the kids are standing here, can we have one, one, one volunteer, please come. There you go, there you go. So, I come, the kid is already, Sarananga Chami, Sarananga Chami. Of course, the cushion is much bigger, ne? it's a meditation cushion, it's not this one, so, Sarananga Chami, and then I come with the kids, where did you took refuge? In the Buddha, and then I ask the other one, where do you take refuge? In Panya, in Samadhi, in Sila, in the Sangha, in the Dhamma. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, my dear family, after that, when they are there, we already spoke about the water of Metta, isn't it? We already said, wow, Metta. So, after I come with them and I tell them, where do you take refuge? Can we see the thing that is happening here in a game? They clearly saw that as soon as suffering comes in, the fire of the world kicks in, Loba, Dosa, or Moha, it's time to run for refuge. And then I turn the image, they run away, and then I ask them, where did you took refuge? In the Buddha, in the Dhamma, in Sila, in Panya. So can we see the thing, the learning that is happening there? Beyond our information, beyond our talking, they already saw what it is. My dear family, this is no joke. This experience, because it was emotional, it's already recorded in their amygdala. So next time the, our kids are in a situation of that mood, of that sensation, their brain will connect refuge because they already we help them as teachers to do that connection. The next time, hopefully, I and mean, it's not a guarantee, but very likely, they will connect to take refuge in the Buddha, in the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Can we see the favor, the, the spiritual favor that we are giving to them? Imagine the learning. Can we speak that? Can we ever, how many hours can we talk for them to understand that? Impossible. It will be impossible. Anyway, the game continues like this. I recommend you, as you can see in the classes, 
you might need a projector, it's very useful. At the end, I will pass this presentation so you can use it in your own classroom. So also it would be good to have a clicker because then I tell them, sorry, I, I, I went too, too far or fast. Okay, well, when the, when, the, when the fire is burning, sorry, next one, when the fire is burning, I tell them, where did you took refuge? And then they say, the Buddha. Then I say, okay, everybody, fill your, your uh, buckets of metta and then they fill the buckets of metta and we do this, the sound effect again. And then I tell them, everybody, just be some. And we put it, throw it into the floor, and suddenly, because this is the, the trick, ne? you have the trick and the trick, and then, it's a trick, and then oh, the music changed, and suddenly, wow, oh, the lot of them, oh, and the kids sometimes, they, I don't tell them about this. Right? So, you just like this, and then you're running around, and they're like, I really start thinking, the devas, the devas, the devas, the devas are happening, and are we are walking, oh, may my father be well, may I be free from enmity and suffering, may all things be well and happy, and suddenly, anyway, you got the, 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 the working of the game, for the game to finish, you start taking one cushion, each time you stop, you take one cushion away. And then you take another cushion, so suddenly, they need to start cramping onto, onto each of the cushions, and it becomes, the fun becomes, when, once you have little cushions, everybody needs to be, ah, and the one who falls down to the, to the lava is out. So you see, you go and sit there, and then, Ana, Pana, Ana, Pana. This is one, I will tell you, we will go now to this one. So you see, the game really works, they love it, you can repeat it, not very often, this is not very often game, but especially the smaller ones get crazy about this one, okay? So you can use it, you see you only have these prints, you have cushions there, and the projection you will, you will get. Sorry, I need to jump a little bit. Close your eyes, Ne, close your eyes. Yes, contemplate. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Look, this is one photo that was taken just when they were holding there in the cushion and they were running around. This was by the end of the game almost, but they still like to be hugging and like this. So fostering also these uh, interactions among them. Mm. So very nice, I really like that photo. Anyway, what we want to do as we are seeing is establish a good balance between reason, content, and creativity and fun. Does it sound good? Sounds like a good idea. Yes. Do you see the potential? Yes. Mm. It really works, it really, really works. Okay, so here we are, have, sorry, I need to change the table. Okay, I did, these ones you can find them online, and yes, you can be controlling. As you can see in the presentation, I do with children, I ask my teachers, and I'm not putting the music for my entertainment, I'm doing it to ease the stress of the kids and also to, to play. So as you can see, I use the meta chant and some music that is very soft. It's already already there. Thank you. It's already there. And uh, as monk, ah, this one failed. Thank you. I already, uh, you, you don't, we don't do it for entertainment, but yes, for teaching purposes. So here we have the four words that we, I would say that including them in our classes will be a great, uh, relief even for ourselves to make the content relevant to make it reasonable foster curiosity and to have fun all of us did you saw me do you think i was bored when i was playing this game no. of course no <laughs> i was having the time of my life and if they see you also having fun, of course they also go with you. As a monk, I have to take care of a few things, but you have less con restraints. There will be only one with fun that you need to take care. See that because don't get lost in fun because you still need to lead the, the, the class. <laughs> don't get lost or, or allow agitation to kick in. So we will need moments like this to come back. And also the children need them. After a, a big running around and jumping and all this and ah, the fire and burning like this, you come back and then I say, Ana. And then you say, Pana. Okay, I say, Ana. Pana. Ana. 
Yes, only not yet, not yet. I say, Anna, Pana. So this I do with the kids. I explain, the, Anna, Pana means that. Anna is cup hey. Pana means who hey. That's it. Anna, breathe in. A pana. Anna, Pana. I want to hear, Anna, Pana. Yes, like this. And then you come every moment. Once the children know, this is another tip that I want to, whenever you see the group going too far, you have your mic or whatever you have, and you say, Anna, and they know immediately, Pana, immediately works. Anna, Pana, and you are already opening another avenue. What is Anna Pana? Dun, dun, dun. And we, here we go. Okay, ready to move a little bit more? Okay, let's breathe in, and we'll do warrior Anna Pana. Ne? Anna, and when we are Pana, we do, we do who, like a, like a warrior. Okay, Anna, Apana. <laughs> ah, so, 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 so. A little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. Anna, Apana. <laughs> Not yet. Ah, one more time. No, it's okay, but one more time. Anna, Apana. <laughs> yeah, very good. No, I feel strong. Very good. Now we can work. Okay? So, this is the first part of the workshop. We covered already this. This, my dear family, if I were to only give this gift to teachers, Wow, this will really, really help. So, as you can see, which one of these would you say is more important? Think about it. Important for whom? And now we start talking about the groups we have. For example, if I'm talking about children, which one do you think is the most important? Small ones, small ones, like seven, six year olds. Huh? Which one? Fun. And for teenagers? Fun. And for adults, fun. <laughs> okay, let's take away the first three. Oh. No, for teenagers, which one do you think is more important? Relevance. Right, and relevance. And which one would you put in second, second place? Reason, isn't it? And of course, fun is to be there and curiosity. So you see, you will start taking this formula, and I will encourage you as a kind of, not homework, you, uh, we, I won't see it or anything, and feel free, but I will do children from this age to this age, and place them by order of importance. Which one do you need to foster more? We saw children, fun. Naturally, we already know it. How many of you are mother or father? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot. Of course, you know well how the children behave. You have a lot of experience. Okay, so grade them. And for example, teenagers, we said relevance. Yes. If teenagers don't have the first one, they are out, and they will be out forever. And that is very painful. To have a teenager that doesn't like to be there, oh, that's the most painful thing. <laughs> <laughs> so reason, relevance, and fun as well. Now, in fun, we are very, it's very tricky, because we, eh, I include myself, I want them to have fun in the way I have fun. So you can go, okay, let's have fun. I brought the mahjong. <laughs> and they will be like, what are you talking about? Ma, no, like this. So we need to have fun. We as teachers need to adapt to the way they have fun. So this is going to be challenging for you. So if now teenagers have fun with their phones, what can we do? Are we going just forbid their phones? Or are we going to start to doing Dhamma TikToks? I mean... You know, we, we, we need to start doing. There are many ways of using their devices in a creative way, making their devices Kalyana Meta. There is another talk I gave in, I think here also, no, we spoke. Here, no, we spoke about how to make the phone your Kalyana Meta. So you can find it online, and there are many tools and de 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 dedicated for teenagers. Even about talking about the dangers of X rated content. In Singapore, I gave another talk. I think it's also online. I will try to find the link which talks on how to talk to teenagers elegantly. I am a monk. I cannot talk openly about those things, but it's possible to talk, and they know what I mean. So how to prevent them from seeing X-rated or adult content in their phones, which now is a big problem. If you parents can put parental controls in your children's phone, tablets, and computers, please do so. I mean, I'm not asking. Please do so. It is very, very Ah, sad that this is happening. That people is earning money by reducing the quality of your children. Period. 
other people that doesn't know you or know your kids is getting money. The lower their mind goes, the more money they get. Look at it. As big as that is the problem. Let's start doing something. And as teachers and parents, it is our responsibility because they will not see it. So mm, be careful, my dear family. So for adults, you will do the same. And for grandparents, you will do the same. But anyway, we are also human and everything works for all of us. Good. How is our time? We started what time? Two. Two. OK, going good. Now, next one, to just to reinforce, reinforce, I will be speaking about some more techniques and games that work. So how do animals learn? By playing. What do they play? Hunting and fighting. That's what, because that's what they will need. They need to learn how to hunt, and they need to learn how to fight. Because two things they are worried. To continue alive and not to be killed. <laughs> I mean, it's the same, just opposite. <laughs> So this is what they do, and that's the animals. That's the, the, the way they play is the way they behave. What about animal, hum, human animals? Of course, la, it is the same, exactly the same. When, who used to play uh, so any of these, what, teacher, doctor, when you were small? Raise your hand. Yeah. Who was playing, when you were a child, were playing that thing, and then you became that? You played doctor, and then you became doctor. You played teacher, and you became teacher. Raise your hand. Oh, very few, very few. Anyway, we all play human, and we are here, here we are. <laughs> mama, papa, maybe you also play mama, papa. Anyway, so by playing is how we learn, isn't it? It's the most fun, it's the most uh, interesting, engaging, because it's our hobby. We love to do it. So. This is another aspect that I want to say we need to bring it into our classroom. And there is even now one technique that is called gamification. So anyway, as you can get, there is even a book is called Gamifi Gamify or something like this. You can find many information online. So it is anyway, in our classroom, we need to cover some content and move from one place to the other. You cannot explain about uh, mental stability if you didn't explain morality first. We, there are some stages that you need to go. So yes, of course, if you have guilt, how can you meditate? Of course you cannot. So first we need to explain the, the we need to explain the precepts and then we go to the mental concentration just to put an example but everything is like that the 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 drill is how can we find ways engaging games and places that they feel feel uh, invited to be learning and gaining some achievements because gamification is very much about it how to how to achieve something and reach some goals so how to do that in a fun way one of the things we can do, and this is the trick that I'm using, I'm taking the games that I loved, the games that I loved when I was a child, for example, uh, the free stack that I will show you next. And for example, we all know all these games and we did have a lot of fun. Now what we need to do is, we don't need to invent new games. Bring them to them. I'm sure the kids now don't know these games anymore. But I can assure you that if they put the phone beside and give them a chance, they will have fun the same way we had because we are still human. So bring the Chinese sticks, bring the whatever it is, the whole hopscotch, the rope. I, I jumped the rope a lot in, the, in, the, in all the groups because of another reason. Children everywhere, but I have to say, and I have to be honest, more in Asia are totally disembodied. They are, I'm sorry to say, very physically very clumsy. So how do you want them to be, sorry, how do we want them to be comfortable in their minds if they are not even comfortable in their bodies yet? So very big mind with much information, but their bodies, oh my goodness, it is sad to see. Very clumsy kids. So also I take that and I spoke with my teacher, with Bante Arias, I say, Bante, how can I teach something further if they are disembodied? They don't know how to do things. They don't know how to use their hands. They don't know. Uh, you throw them a ball and they're like, uh, man, it's a game. Now you, th you, you are with the ball and you throw one like this. We have a problem. So you need to start training them. Jump the rope, bring them out. Children are all the time in the rooms. What did they do? Nah, I will sound like an old man. Ne? In my days, <laughs> life was different. <laughs> we used to go to nature and climb the trees, put one rope and make a swing, 
eat whatever food was available and we, all the family was fun, isn't it? Well, my dear family, all that is gone by now. When do you go to your kids? Have your kids climbed a tree? Oh, no, no, there is helmet for everything. Helmet for this, helmet for that. Put this, oh, no, oh, no, no. And then, I'm sorry, Ned, but I think it's too much sometimes. The kids are walking in the mountain and the mother coming in the back with a towel. Oh, no. <laughs> and the kid, oh, mama. Okay. <laughs> really, we are making a generation, much weaker generation of us, forget about our parents and forget about our grandparents. Yeah. The strength our grand... Oh, I really sound like an old man. <laughs> but anyway, it's a little bit true. I don't want to foster this a lot, but it's a reality. Current generations, even you can see in their hands, the shape of the hands and the texture of the hands, I worry a little bit because they have greater challenges than the ones we faced. <clears throat> Actually, yeah. this generation is more difficult, but they are weaker. Can you see the problem ahead? I don't, I, I have hope, and I hope we are the hope, part of the hope, but I am worried. Current generation have more problems ahead, and they are way weaker than us in many respects. I really hope they find another way, digital ways to do something. But physically, I'm telling you, disembodied. People, ch young children don't know why. Because we parents, it's not them. Oh, very bad boy, very bad girl. Why are you like this? You know why? Because of you and I. Because who taught them? Who overprotected them? Who gave them more than necessary without even asking something? Not some, I'm not giving you something in return just for you to learn how the world works. You show responsibility, you get rights. You show no responsibility, you have no rights. And that's how the world works. I'm not being a bad parent. We are, we are not being bad parents. We are just showing them outside. Nobody will give them something if they didn't did something for to earn it. Well, who is spoiling them? Us. Over giving, over this, over that. And I worry, to be honest, as a brother of you and of them. We are together like this, and I'm not trying to point fingers at no one. But we all need to get conscious, and I worry, my dear family. Do you? It's a little bit worrisome. In Macau, I, I love one, 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 one phrase. One time, I don't know, somebody heard, and oh, did like this. And then my, my ex-wife said, oh, are you made out of tofu or what? She said, <laughs> So I love that. I think this current generation, and maybe one or two already, made out of tofu. <laughs> so anything that happens, oh, 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 like, no, man, look at the challenges ahead, and you're already falling because of that. I worry. OK, the point is made. And here we come, how we are re being responsible in many, in many respects. I mean, safety belts, ne? We, wanted to, we want to improve from the, we need to go to the root. Anyway, the point in this slide is, my dear family, we already know games that we love. We already enjoy them. Bring back to them. They will love them. Now in Taiping, they love the rope. They, when I ask them, what do you want to play? Rope! They love the rope. And it's just jumping. And you know what? Something very beautiful. You know who taught them? The grannies. Because they, were, they came back to their childhood, and they were jumping, and you could see them sweating and having the, the, the fun of their day. And they were showing the grandchildren or the mamas. You see? So very nice. Mm. Interaction, but the game will not be enough. Because then my own teacher, Banteria, or any of my teachers out there would say, hey, you're just playing with the kids. What are you doing here? Ne? I'm amongst you, and we're still teaching the Dhamma. So we need to go further. We want to liberate our children from the obsession and slavery that not just them, ne? not just them, ne? <laughs> all of us are now having, why don't we free ourselves at least a little bit? The dependence we are having, this is just, this is part of the problem and this is just gonna get worse. Why? How can I tell? Turn your phone, don't be playing with your phone, eh? Put it, put it down in the, in the <laughs> I look very nice, Mima. I told you already to put the tablet down. I, I don't know why you're doing that, why are you doing, okay. Put it down, eh? <laughs> so, if we don't start doing any changes ourselves, we're already all hooked. 
we cannot just point to them, oh, very bad boys, as, we, as I said. So my dear family, we need to start doing something. This is really a problem, and it's already there. Associ the health associations around the world are already starting to treat phone as a addiction. They are already centers for, for uh, detox of phone, and we can do it before it gets a problem. If you are down in the night, scrolling up, you have, you have the desire, you have the need to go up to the toilet for pee pee, and you wait still because you're looking this, that is what addicts do. Ne? That is what addicts do. I won't, tell, I won't say, who happens this? Lara, don't worry, I won't say that. <laughs> but I'm sure, I think all of us have been postponing our going to the toilet because we were already on to, or you bring it to the toilet. Anyway, there is Wi-Fi also there. Ne? Ah, my dear family, we have uh, something that we need to start addressing. And our children are born in with it. Mm. I don't know what the Buddha will say to this new habit. <laughs> because it's very destructive. I don't think he will be very happy about distraction. And not just distraction. Painfully low quality kind of distractions. Isn't it? Painfully low quality distractions. And we are all consuming it. And in the Majjhima Nikaya 19, the Buddha says, whatever you incline your mind, in that your mind becomes. So we are those memes, we are those silliness. Include me, please. I am not pointing fingers, I'm just talking as a family. If we don't start thinking and talking about this in an elegant way, without pushing our teens or anybody, nobody will. You go Yamcha, no, Sunday? The whole big table, 15 people table, huge table, everybody sitting down, and everybody? <laughs> Only Ye Ye and Popo? <laughs> or sometimes Ye Ye, ye, ye also? <laughs> Now, uh, because we feel bad, oh, we talk to Taka, 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 Kuche, Kuche. Why don't we get a phone for Papa? He really needs some. He needs, he needs to be connected. What if, what if something happens to him? He needs a phone. Of course, now, but Ye Ye will also get hooked into something. And then, oh, oh, yeah, now you got it. You see, so yes, this happened to my grandma, eh? too, in, in, in there. So anyway, <laughs> a little bit funny, but serious also. Mm. Okay, so hopefully we can bring our children also. It's not that just prohibit. If you prohibit without giving any op alternative, they will get angry, simple. But if you take, okay, just borrow me this for a little while, and I bring you something that is way more fun and way more healthy and way more engaging and way more loving, and you will laugh even more than with the phone, then we are doing something good. Not just taking away, but giving a good option. Everybody good? Okay. So what to do? We have these games that we all love and know. What we need to do is take away the stories and put a new story. That's it. That's what I did. You saw the lava game already existed. Not invention. Just change the story and now you put the Dhamma on top. This is one of the main takeaways from this workshop. My dear family, take away and remake with Dhamma content. And it is not difficult. We just need a little bit of uh, creativity and it happens smoothly. Hmm. So, this is a very important moment of the session. My dear Dhamma brothers and Dhamma family and sisters, brothers, sisters and Dhamma family, from now on, you are not a teacher. From now on, you are an artist. Ah, feels good, isn't it? You are not a teacher anymore. Release yourself from it. Teaching is an art. We are sculpting, sculpting minds. That is the job of us. I was an artist, that was my job. And believe me, I was dying to arrive home to sit in the piano. I was dying. I was on the, on the bus. I was already playing in the legs. No one told me, no, no time my mother went and told me, if, if you love something, which happens with the arts, 
The painter is not waiting for somebody, oh, go and paint, go and play your music. If you love something, it's your hobby, you die about it. Why don't we do the same with teaching? Why don't we change to something that is creative, that keeps us engaged? So really, my dear family, this is serious. And I could stop the talk today with this. If this one really kicks in, stop being teacher, let's become an artist. Now you are an artist. We will find uh, creative ways to go through, and here we go. Okay, last example, because I need to share you this one, because uh, it is a... Uh, these games are very, very uh, uh, popular with the kids. So you know free stack, no? You are running, and then and you touch somebody, and that people can, that person cannot come. And then you until somebody come and rescue. So how to change that? I call it Mara Freeze. So I made this one like a medallion. I printed in color and then laminated them and put a, a string around. I print four of these, four Maras. So I put the, the children who have the Mara medallion, so then everybody starts running and he, if he starts, I freeze you, freeze you, and obviously in the Dhamma, who is the one freezing us from growing spiritually? Of course, Mara, and the kids love Mara. So then you tell the story of Mara, you tell all this, this and that, the life of the Buddha, you already have a lot of material to share, then they know who is Mara, now you are Mara. Then you ask, who wants to be Mara? Me! Everybody running around, so first part is Mara freeze, you send one or two times, but then you bring the other one, and it's Buddha release. Ah, so who released you from there? So now you have another medallion with the Buddha. So you ask the kids, who wants to be the Buddha? Me! So now, how oh, many bodhisattvas? Me? <laughs> anyway, so you can imagine the, the fun they have while they think about the Dhamma. So who wants to be Mara? Then they come. Somebody wants to change? Yes, I want to change for the Buddha. I want to change to Mara. And some of them are just running around. And then tip, professional tip, always keep more Maras than Buddha. I tell you this, eh? this is a, it's a secret. Because I tried, when you have same number of Maras and same number of Buddhas, it's uh, tag, freeze, release, freeze, release, freeze, release, like this, and it doesn't really run. Oh, Maras. <laughs> anyway, the world has more suffering than goodness, generally. <laughs> so this one really works. You, I, I will also pass all these prints, you can make them. Children love it. And they burn their energy. If you feel the cheats already like this, jumping in the chair, you put them to play this, wow, they run around nicely. Okay, so this one. And then another one, which they also love. I think this is the one they pick the most. So, I call it the fireball. So I said to them that, hmm, they are the ball of fire. There are three things that burned us. Anyway, everybody okay? Yeah. Energy okay? Okay, we will do warrior breathing, ne? Five times, for one for each kanda. Okay, kaphei, huhei. No, that's not warrior, that's zero. That was just rehearsing. Kaphei, huhei. Ana, pana. Ana, pana. Ana, pana. Yes, very good, working, working, yes. So, this one I call <clears throat> the fireball, and then I explain, of course, one ball that burns you is desire, Another one is anger, and another one is ignorance. You can use the Pali, so it's good. And how to know if I am burning by them, of course, then you introduce mindfulness, sati, many things you start playing. And then I use these balls that you can, that we prepared today. Sorry, I need to arrange also the rope. So we have these balls here. So you, you make sure that you have the loba game. The, the, okay, I will need two, the, uh, no. Uh, four, four volunteers, four volunteers, come from here, four volunteers, yeah, yeah, feel free, feel free. Okay, one, can we remove the cushions and we will use this space. <clears throat> okay, so here we have just, just a small demonstration. <laughs> So we have the balls, and then we, you leave up the kids in the middle, and then <clears throat> you start, for example, I have the dosa. This is the one they like the most, actually. So you have the dosa ball, you put the tape. Sorry. Then you start the game. And then, okay, I will need one here. Ah, uh, no, sorry, three in the middle, and you. 
So what we do, sorry, go to the middle. So, yeah, yeah. so this ball, if this ball, the, the, the ball of dosa burns you, if it kicks you, then you are out. Ne? So what we will do, I will do slow motion. You need to try, but you cannot go this way. Now you only have this place. Go to the center, go, no cheating, no cheating. So here we go, here comes the slow motion. Yes, it goes. And then you get it, and now, sati there. Throw, 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 throw. Careful, if somebody, you come throw. Throw, 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 throw. No, no, in the floor, like bowling, like bowling. Yes, but now it's soft, ne? I don't play with the kids like this. Ne? I really play like this, and then you go, and then you go like out. And he comes, here he comes, and then he comes, dosa, and then he comes, and then out, and then two out. Okay, out, and then they go. So then I call them, sati, sati, sati. They already know. I run the game in Pali, so I say sati, 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 samadhi, samadhi, samadhi. They already know what it is. Dosa coming, dosa coming. Careful. No, not to me, to her. Now you want to have. Okay, to her. Okay. Oh yeah. What? Very good. And here comes dosa. Sati, sati, sati. Come, somebody. Oh yeah. Very good. Anyway, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. One big applause for everybody. Thank you. Anyway, it really works, and the kids loved it. So, but now when you look at what is happening, look all the material that through a game we already opened. You were already talking about sati mindfulness, samadhi concentration, and how the lack of sati and samadhi, then the defilements can burn you, they hit you, I'm sorry, and then you are out, you are out of the game. And when the kids go out of the game, what do they do? They go and contemplate their breath, period, to come back. And they're waiting, and then we have the last ones, and then throwing, but really, I was soft now, eh? I was really soft, <laughs> really, ah! and then throw. Then it's going to be good that you have an assistant in your class. That's going to be very useful. The assistant already do what, know what to do, and then you already explained the game from before, so you don't have these awkward moments of who, 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 who is doing what. And then sometimes I have two assistants, because as a monk, of course, I play with the kids, but I have some limits there. Eh? So I need to step back and then I'm just talking to them. Oh, sati, 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 going, going, like this. <laughs> and the kids uh, have a lot of fun. And then after that, once they are tired physically, then you sit down and talk. What happened? Why did you got burned? Then you start investigating. Oh, wonderful opportunity to talk about the defilements. Wonderful opportunity for talking about the importance of concentration, mindfulness, and the techniques we have. Once they finish, I say, Anna, Pana, they reply. Anna, Pana, they reply. So, another thing that I would totally encourage you to do, because it's very beneficial, let them become crazy for a little while. Let them play as they play. You don't worry. You don't need to inspire them to become crazy. Yeah, they will do by themselves. <laughs> but then make it a game to stop. Sometimes I stop the music, and then Anna, and then come back, come back, come back, Pana. And then I really call them Anna, Pana, and then calm them down, calm them down. And suddenly the music comes back again and then I get the ball and throw again, you see? And then they go and then I tell them, yes, the world can become very crazy. Many, very often the world becomes very crazy, but we need to know how to come back. Do that over and over and over again. I will, I will tell you one time, generally, when we have the kids, we have the parents sitting somewhere there. For example, if you are the kids, the parents are looking in the back in chairs and looking everything. It's important to have the parents also because now the parents are also learning, maybe they are learning things that they didn't knew from the class. And maybe the kids will ask them questions and then the parents will not know what to say about it. Anyway, everybody grows. One time when we were doing the craziness, I was, I was uh, how to say, practicing that one over and over again. Crazy, come back. Crazy, come back. Crazy, come back. Like this with the Anapana and the kids were very good. At the end, a group of uh, a couple of parents came and said, "Wow, Bante, you should be giving this worship to us. <laughs> you be teaching us." I say, "Yes, I, I agree. It's very important. The world gets very crazy, and we need to learn how to come back." Now, imagine if we were skillful enough to give that gift to those kids. If they use it beyond the Sunday school. Imagine, and I have gotten reports of kids that they, that they do. They know how to come back to their bodies, kaya. 
They recognize suffering, something is going wrong, the world got very crazy, and they can tell to themselves, Anna, Anna, my dear family, please do not underestimate how deep this can be. And you want more better news? This is not just worldly. If that consciousness, which is open and trusting you, gets that seat, it will follow that person for lives until that little one, our little friend, gets fully liberated. Imagine, this is what we are doing here. So please rejoice and take the importance of it. Very good. Thank you for your work again. This is what we do. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Ding. Okay, time is gone. We are good in time, I think. We are on time. How are you? How is it going for you? How is it going? Going good? We will have, uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, I'm going, we will see a few more things to almost closing. The first, the first part, we will take the break. And then uh, we will come back to the second, second area. So the first part was mostly for them. And now we will go for us as teachers, how to take care of us, né? because generally we're focus, 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 eh? and what about us? If we have, if our cup is empty, how can we fill theirs? So that will be the second part. I just want to show you a few images to see how they love that game, <laughs> and they have no reserves. But I want to show you, look at her face, wow, it's like, Look at that. If everybody is and that's it. Sati, 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 samadhi, samadhi. Dosa coming. Pshung, and then I throw. <laughs> and you can see them there anyway. I really like. These are the kids in Taiping. Mm. Okay. To finish up with how does gamification work, you can take a photo of this. This, you will find it online. You have more and more tools. Gamification, you earn points, you receive rewards. That's, that's what means a game. You overcome challenges and un unlock new levels. It's coming fully, then your brain gets excited. I mean, there is interest in there. And then you, you're looking for some results. In the brain, releases dopamine, you feel good. The, the people who is playing feels good. You feel motivated and you look forward for rewards. And this is the last thing I will speak before closing, going to the rest. How do we reward the kids in Taiping or in the places where I do the workshop sometimes? Here we go, the, the rewards. What we do is we make some pins and then they, they are collectible. Collect, collectible? So they, they can make a collection out of it. But these pins are not like normal pins. These are Dhamma pins. So the first pin that we did is called the Dhamma Hero. So this is the first one we did. And then, of course, you are a Dhamma hero, and we did. Hi, Suri! Sorry, 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 sorry. Inside came, inside came, inside came. Ah, wake up now, ah! Mganyula, mganyula, very good, good. Okay, so this is the first batch that we give them to start the game, and then I tell the kids, you know, you got today this one just because you're coming to the, to the, to the workshop and then we are, we are with the Buddha, knowing the Buddha. But you know, that's not the only one to get. And the kids are like, wow. And actually, not just those, but all of these, wow. So do you want to get the other ones? What do you think the kid says? Yeah. Yes. We already gave them the first. And actually, I will recommend, you know in Burma, they use something here in the chest to, to cover, the yogis use something. We made one for all of them because we found that problem. At the beginning, we were putting the pins into their shirts. But as then as we go to the game, sometimes they were hitting them or they came out or something. So the idea we got was making this band. So they have in their band, you put all the badges, and before you go to the games, they take out the band with all their badges, and then just put it out there. And also when they go home, one of the mother told me that the boy uh, used to come, the boy and the, they were brother and sister, they used to come and put it in, the, in, their, li in their bedroom, so they were looking at their, at their badges like this. So that is another, we learned the hard way, but yes, I recommend you, so they are, easy to take and out. Anyway, this was the first one, and then I told them, do you want to know which is the other one? 
yes, well, you need to learn a few special things, né? you need to show your knowledge before we can give you this thing, no, because it's, it's very special. Okay, the next one we did was to teach them how to practice meta meditation. So, okay, you want to get this one? This is the meta batch, né? but until you know how to do meta meditation, until you guide me, that was the, 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 the challenge I raised to him. Okay, I will show you how to meditate, love making, loving kindness meditation, but the moment you guide me to do meta meditation and I really feel meta, then you earn the badge. Okay? Yes, and they really go like. <laughs> okay, so of course we taught them how to send meta to themselves. May I be well, may my family be well, animals and humans. And here comes the day, definitely the sun will come up, ne? In Saiken. <laughs> then meta, you get the star of meta, loving kindness. That day we, the, we make sure that the parents are there. So when the parents are there, then suddenly, wow! And then the kids already know what's coming. <laughs> and then from there I get this one. And I was keeping here in my pocket one of the real ones. And so I don't have them today because I didn't know we were going to have this. Anyway, after that, I take it out and ta -da! I show. And then we line up all the parents and then they got the meta and then the parents come. Wow, this moment very beautiful. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because the kid, after they, talk, they guide me, because I, sit, I sat down, sorry, this went a bit far. I sat down and I said, okay, now you tell me, how you do meta meditation? First to yourself, how? May I be well? Repeat after me. Okay, may I be well? May I be well? May I be free from suffering? May I be free from suffering? Anyway, they win it. Then the parents come, and they are the parents. You can see that that moment is special also to the parents. You could see some, some things move, né? and then the kids, I put a line, we put a line, all the kids standing, and then the parents come, meta batch, and then we celebrate, very nice. Anyway, the sound effects and all this you can find online, and I will pass all these projections so you can use it also there. Then as you can see, it is not the only one, now we have the next one. We already started working with Sati, Anapana they know, and the big one was Sila. And then I gave them a challenge, okay? When you are able to recite, not by memory, but just reading nicely the Pali and the English, then you will get the Sila. Believe me, you don't need to, to, to push them to learn the precepts. <laughs> <laughs> because they already want the, you show them the badge anyway you can see these are the badges that we ah sorry one one last thing here you as you can see we're going for sila and then you have all the all the paramis dana upeka ditana so you already open to yourself so much spaces for teaching them talking about each of these very beautiful what do they mean you make games about them and then in this way, you have the gamification is round because they are having challenges and they are looking for some kind of reward. So in this case, it has really worked. These are the ones that they earned uh, last time. Uh, sorry, the image is not very good quality, but uh, the badges are very easy to make and cheap, actually. We made like a 50 or 50 or 60 of each because sometimes the little brother came and oh mom I also want okay the little brother came one. Well, no. <laughs> then I also got one and also the helpers Bante can I get one set? <laughs> yes you can get one set so everybody was killing the budget very popular so they're like this size around I have already the, the PDF printed so you just send to the shop and very nicely they kind of laminated them and they have the thing mm. Taubo, Taubo, you can do it Taubo <laughs> How about Shopee or one of the dogs? Some of them they do that, that. Anyway, good. I will leave you with one question, and now we're going to the to the recess, to the rest. We are working hard for the kids to have fun, isn't it? My question I want to leave: Are you? Are you having fun? Yes. Not now, ne? While you are teaching. <laughs> Of course, now I can see you have fun. <laughs> no, no, okay, I keep going. Let me make the question again. <laughs> While you are teaching, preparing, thinking about it, staying with the kids, going to the association, dealing with all the things that you are dealing, are you having fun? Yes. Yes, good, that's very good. Okay, this is something that we will look forward and also how to take care 
of the of, of ourselves so that is the the second part there will come a few other tips there anyway with that being said <laughs> so first really my dear family from my heart i wish to offer an apology in case something that i said or because I, there were some uh, pressing issues no so maybe I, I i am too passionate about some of the things for example what we are doing to the children but i want to offer an apology if a word or tone or physical movement or facial expression was not uh, pleasant or of your or, or, or felt i wish that it doesn't generate anything put it aside please i take responsibility from it and uh, take the dhamma whatever dhamma and message is there i really want to leave it clear i'm sorry if any word or expression was not of uh, pleasant I take responsibility and I do, I, do, I do feel some passion about these topics and I hope also didn't want to criticize and as I said, I rem remind you again, I, I am very Chinese, 20 years I live here, so not, yeah, 20 years living and I have a Chinese family and I have my, it's, it's my family and I have seen it closely, so there was no intention of criticizing or pinpointing, you know, is it okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. We keep the Dhamma and we, we continue. Thank you.